Ladies and gentlemen, our spies return once more with glorious news from Paradox HQ. We will be taking a look at the second part of the Italian focus tree. That's right, alt history. First off, we'll start with the alternative fascist path, the most likely of the alt history outcomes, where we will be able to oust Mussolini somewhere after the Ethiopian War and before the Second World War, hopefully, and replace him with someone else. Of course, removing someone as Mussolini is not all straightforward and requires some whispering in the shadows. Having chosen this path, of course, we will have to maneuver our way through the balance of power mechanics, as we discussed in the first Dev Diary, but this time we will be working to move the balance towards the Grand Council instead of towards Mussolini. This will work very much like the way it works with the Soviet Soviet tree now, you take a certain branch and the AI will work behind the scenes continuing its own path. And once enough power has been gathered by the council, we can go to the focus, convene the Grand Council and on to the Duce's fate. We do what we must, but that is only if we did the struggle in Ethiopia. Of course, some of us are just too good at the game and we cannot lose. You can still get rid of Mussolini even if you went through the solid progress route in Ethiopia, it will just be more expensive. And this is what it looks like once we've gotten rid of Mussolini. We will have two fascist options. Italo Balbo with his own little focus tree and Dino Grandi again with his own little focus tree and in the middle they share a little bit of a sub tree related to purging the party, how the new leader will style himself and for the fate of Italy and such. And both of these men will have their own focus. This is a closer look at that shared branch I just mentioned. Each will have to choose a side at the start to stop squandering or to consolidate power and then work your way down. Make a little choice here and there. Divino Duce is where you want to emulate Mussolini's style of being the big man, you know, the, the cult of personality. Or a greater purpose means you focus the efforts towards the greater good, the nation or the grand council itself, but not place all the power with one man. Certainly interesting and it's a lot cooler than what we have now, so this looks cool. And in grand Soviet style, we will have a Purges. We will have purges aplenty. Purge advisors, purge the generals, purge no one, or better yet, everyone. It's gonna depend, I guess, on, on what all these things do. Somebody's gonna come up with a most optimal route. They always do. And since we're on the purge path, we can, can also choose Mussolini's fate. Let him stand trial. I'm expecting it to be a bit of a mock trial. We can just straight up execute him, be clever about it and assassinate him quietly. Many options. Um, I think I know which I'm going to side with. And like I said before, the Divino Duce, you will be emulating Mussolini's style, that cult of personality, and it will reflect on your country and on your leader with uh, some bonuses like popularity, war support, and even a trait, Divino Duce, more division organization. Like, it is overall good. It, it can be very beneficial, but we have to see what the other side offers. Instead of glorifying one man, we turn to a greater purpose, and these are also good bonuses. So we'll have to weigh just which is the best, which flavor you're looking for here. I don't, I don't think we are going to see an absolute, this is perfect, this sucks route. This is a, a matter of choice, some flavors. And here's the first man of the hour, Italo Balbo. He did some interesting things, such as get shot down by Italian anti-air defenses who could apparently not shoot the British, but they sure as hell managed to shoot their own commander. So that's how Italo Balbo died. But he was very popular. He rivaled Mussolini's popularity at some point. He did great things wherever he was sent. He completely revamped the Italian air force and turned it into a world-class air force. He was then made governor of Libya just to get him out of the picture where he again did great things. He modernized the colony, got the roads in order, did a pretty good job until, you know, he got shot down. <laughs> he was not a fan of the Germans though. He, uh, he, he would rather ally with the UK. And little spoiler, that is one of the options we will have with these alternative paths. We will be a true counterpart to Germany. And to reflect Italo Balbo's historical deeds, we will have the option to either reorganize the army or reorganize the air force. Choices will have to be made, of course. There are not enough resources for both and after having made that initial choice the following focuses will improve upon that choice as well. Overall Italo Balbo will be a military country leader. As you can
can see by some of these bonuses. Additionally, his path will also be the only way to get more resources out of Libya, uh, because historically he was governor of the region and some deposits of oil and steel were discovered there, though they were not really prospected or employed until after the war. But this way you will be able to have that option. And that brings us to our second contender, little Dino here, Dino Grande. He was the man who originally got rid of Mussolini. That's right, he is the man who put the dagger in Il Duce's back and ended up deposing him in 1943, Dino Grande. And him being more of a diplomat, he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs after all, his path is more focused towards diplomacy. You can see here, you can side with the French, you can side with the British. There are more options, but it will focus on turning outwards and finding different friends than the Germans. And having found those friends, he will also be able to proclaim the Italian Empire and allow Italy to take its place in the sun. Not only is it going to boost the morale of your troops and get you some more manpower, it also, you know, has a lot of cool bonuses in there. Look at that. Father of the Empire. And Dino Grandi's career and path lead more towards economic bonuses instead of military ones. This man will be focused on building up the country's industry and economy in the shape of economic reforms, improving the industries, etc. This will be a counterpoint to Italo Balbo, a choice, good army, decent economy or great economy, decent army. You'll have to see which is best. I personally prefer to have the better economy, but you know, army is also cool. And as with all things Italy, the balance of power once again comes into play. Both as Italo Balbo and Grandi here, there will be a power struggle between the Grand Council and the country leader. For Balbo, this means the more the balance of power is in his favor, the better the army bonuses. While for Grandi here, the flip side, you get better economy, but you're sacrificing other things. Now, looking at this, I don't mind 7.5% training time or a 7% conversion speed penalty the rest of these things look pretty okay but enough about fascism the best path is yet to come monarchy baby monarchy that is right we will be able to put king vittorio Emanuele the third the soldier king in charge of italy once more once we've gotten rid of vile mussolini the king can step up and do what needs to be done and he gets a mighty spicy tree here mighty spicy indeed. We'll get a small little uh, subtree related to the economy underneath the extraction industry. Mostly small bonuses uh, related to either resources, military factories, some civilian factories. And down there, mobilize the railway guns is actually pretty cool. It will allow you to build railway guns quicker. And it also gives you old railway guns from the First World War that will be reactivated. Historically, Italy didn't do this, but uh, you know, kings always know best, so bigger gun is more gooder. And the tree will culminate in that new forms of weaponry. This is all very much work in progress. Right now, it's a nuclear research bonus. This is not final. Idea is to make Italy some sort of a pioneer in nuclear research. I don't know if that's even remotely historical. Work in progress. They can still change this. And it is all history, so if we're going crazy, why not? And then we come to the really spicy stuff, the political part part of the monarchist branch. On the left, revoke the Acerbo law is essentially turning it more constitutional monarchy. Power to the king though, now power to the king, that is what we like. That is absolute monarchy. Victor Emmanuel takes all the power that he deserves. It is his Italy, he will run it as he sees fit. And one of the neat little things you can do if you give all power to the king is, well, if you want to, you can make him immediately pass it all over to his son, Prince Umberto. Don't really know why you'd want to, but the boy does have some bonuses to him. Other than that, the king can also get rid of the black shirts to take a real bite out of fascism in Italy or put the black shirts to work, but at the expense of increased fascism support. Don't know how many fascists you want in your country. The ideal number is zero after all, but it is the second world war. They do play a large part. And all the way to the right here, seek papal support. Yes, that's right. The Pope plays a part. And how how do they play a part in the balance of power? If you've gone down that branch, the Vatican sub-branch, you will get some bonuses to stability, political power, non-aligned support, even some operatives and compliance. But um, you 
will have to play along with the Pope's game. You will have to oppose him on certain points or have to give ground and uh, we'll have to wait and see just what his holiness wants here. Now, should we go for the more democratic path of the Acerbo law, you will have the option between a Christian democracy or democratic king, different flavors of constitutional monarchism. I will spare you the historical details. I'm personally not very well informed here. Peak spiciness of this tree comes into play at the very bottom of this tree. This one is available to both the monarchist paths and all of the fascist paths. Mare Nostrum. And I think you know what this means. This entire path here leads to Rome and all its glory. I look forward to this. I, I will. I think I will make this my very first run. Who doesn't want to see Augustus Mussolini featured even more prominently? And while looking at things that are prominent, here are some more really nice portraits for some new generals. And Prince Umberto down here. Welcome. Another nice addition to Italy. And this is not, not alt history. Italy will have the option to completely reorganize its colonial holdings in the Horn of Africa. So that is Eritrea, Somalia, and should they take it, Ethiopia, into a single colonial nation, Italian East Africa. It will work almost the same as the German Reichskommissariat. It will occupy all that land, but it will not get those cores. Instead, bonuses in the form of national spirits or really good advisors that focus on maintaining resistance and providing more compliance. And should the colony not be able to deal with its problems, even with those excellent bonuses, you will have the option to use a couple of decisions to send either guns or men over there and help sort things out. Now, this is a much better way of handling East Africa than what we've seen before. This is long overdue. This is an excellent approach to the region. It might actually help AI Italy a lot more because they usually funnel a lot of their troops in there because it's a very long border and they just straight up die. Well, they either die or take all of Africa, but they're not in Italy defending Italy tends to lead to their downfall. The Balkan Diplomacy tab has also gotten a couple of updates. Uh, you will be able to send ultimatums to Yugoslavia. You can trade away the Dodecanese islands to either Turkey or Greece. Both are very keen on them. You can put pressure on the Turks to demilitarize Antalya and Izmir. Essentially, this will portray Italy as flexing its muscles in the Balkan, an area which it had historically seen as its own backyard until Germany rolled in and took all of it. More neat little things. Greater Italy. Just like the Greater German Reich is a nice cosmetic tag you can get if you're really successful in a run. Greater Italy can be achieved uh, by decision and it gives you a nice little national spirit, more division organization, more war support, some extra daily compliance, but it makes you a nicer color of green, a little darker, and the tag Greater Italy. It's stuff like this I really like. And now that we've gone through one side of the alt history tree, the anti-fascist parties, after all, also need to have their say. And it looks like a pretty impressive tree on this side as well. Essentially, we will be organizing the opposition to Mussolini's rule. And in order to start unifying the opposition to Mussolini's rule, we must be terrible at this game because it can only be accessed if we have a catastrophic campaign in Ethiopia. That is the only path that leads to unite the opposition and starts the path towards anti-fascism. That can be either democracy or communism. Yes, it will lead to civil war. First off, of course, we will start by unifying all opposition parties into a single unified front against the fascists. And then we go through the focus trees, getting ourselves various buffs and bonuses, some spare equipment, some extra manpower, etc. Just so we are ready to stand up to Il Duce and his black shirts. And this will all culminate in a national tragedy. And once we've won the civil war, we can also yeet the king, of course, because this will now be a republic, republic or uh, <clears throat> communist nation. There will be a choice, either communism or democracy. The Popular Front and Italian Socialism will start a balance of power. And depending on what side you've chosen, you will need to uh, balance this once more. You know, that balance of power thing is going to be a real headache, I fear. First off, communism. A lot of red stars here. On the left there, you see the Garibaldi Legion. This will allow you to send more and better volunteers to the Spanish Civil War, which you always do, but this time you will be sending them 
to the other side. Now, this will actually give you a good option of actually winning the war as the Republicans for the Republicans. So it can change the balance of power in the region significantly. And because communists like red, this is what the communist militiamen, their essentially their version of black shirts, namely red shirts, will look like. Nice attention to detail. Bit of a stereotype though with the with the cap with the red star, but I, I see what they're going for. They look very stylish, very handsome. And the other paths are fairly straightforward. A leader step forward allows us to choose a particular communist leader industrial social socialization industrial socialization will allow us to boost our industry many things essentially that do the same in every branch but with different flavors and since you cannot have a communist path without involving the Soviet Union at some point further down the tree we will have to make a choice we either walk in lockstep with the Soviet Union and the common turn or we go our own path and defend the land, which might lead us into conflict with the Soviets and Stalin in particular. All that workers of the world unite, not really showing here, boys. Fortunately, at least the communist generals look pretty decent. The man has a very neat tie and two women. And second one's not even too bad looking. And because democracy is also a thing in Hearts of Iron 4 and apparently some people really like it, we have that option as well. Now, at first glance, this is not as interesting or as as expansive as the communist tree but i'll reserve judgment for now on the left here you see common ground crush the mafia etc these are shared with the communist tree as well this is an internal affairs sort of tree where you deal with italy's problems with the mafia with the army and how to rebuild the nation after the civil war so that one is shared with the communist the ones on the right are democratic versions of the focuses we just saw for the commies and once we have restored social stability to Italy, we can go on the offensive, well, the charm offensive. With Italia Libera, we will be able to start our own little faction and invite the democracies of Europe to it to preserve peace in our time. Or we can re-establish the old alliance and lean towards the British and the French to do our thing for the good of the world. More options involve the destruction of the communists or bringing down all the fascist strongholds. This will be a democratic Italy that will have options to go to war. And since war is a thing, democratic Italy will also get generals. Apparently though, most of these are still shadows. A lot of this dev diary is still work in progress. And because both communists and democracies look upon colonialism as something pretty bad, we will have several options here. First off, the Ethiopian question. Should we still be at war with Ethiopia? This will allow us to find a peaceful resolution or, well, if we're communist, we might even be able to stir the pot there and get the people to rise up and get rid of Haile Selassie. Moving down further, we have abolish the colonies and new colonial policies. Abolish the colonies works very much like the French focus where all of the colonies, their colonial holdings, will hold referendums deciding whether or not they want to join the mother country and be true members of Italy or if they would much rather go their own way. And further down the branch, we will try to, you know, get the most out of the areas without actually controlling them. Now, new colonial policies will focus more on turning those colonial holdings into puppets and giving them a freer hand there. Down the middle, negotiations with Albania leads to a very similar outcome for Albania, the same as the fascist path. We're gonna annex them. And rounding out the tree at the bottom, irregulars and Ascari will provide more bonuses to your militia or your irregular troops while living liberate the workers of Africa will allow us to get some war goals on the European colonizers of the continent. More options for war, you say? Yes, this Italy will do a lot of fighting no matter what branch you've taken. And that is pretty much it. If you want to have a look at this dev diary for yourself, I have it linked down in the description below. And let me scroll down here. There is a lot more good stuff here. These are all advisors that will be added to Italy. You've not seen these before. We've got a couple of portraits for our generals. No, wait, these are agents. We've got a couple of new agents like the Padre here. Cool new 3D models in the works. All in all, this is shaping up to be a very, very good expansion for Italy and... Um, Talking about expansion, take a look at this picture. That is the original tree. All the rest, whoops, all of this is the new stuff. Absolute mammoth size of the Italian focus tree. But that is it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Our spies have been once again deployed to bring you all the information they can gather. I hope you like this video. I hope you like the next one too. Bye.